How's it going everyone? It's Blake here with ChessPathways.com and in today's openings video we're going to be talking about the London system. The London system is a queen's pawn opening and like other system openings it's known for allowing white to play the same first few moves no matter what black does. White is going to open the game with d4 and from a high level white's plan is simply to play knight to f3, develop this bishop actively on f4 before putting the pawns on dark squares e3 and c3, and then they're going to have no trouble finishing up their development. This bishop can go to d3, this knight can go to d2 in a lot of lines, and all the white pieces are going to stand well. Let's take a look at how the game might go here. Let's say black plays d5, and now again, instead of playing the, the very popular queen's gambit with c4, white's just going to play knight to f3, knight f6, bishop f4. Black might choose to play c5 here, and basically say, okay, if white's not going to play c4 themselves, I'm going to go ahead and play this. And black's not really worried about white taking here because this pawn would probably be won back. It'd be hard for white to defend this pawn. But white will usually not have any interest in that and just continue with their favorite setup. Let's say e3, knight c6, c3, e6, knight b to d2, bishop e7, bishop d3, castle, and castle. And we see white got their ideal setup here. All their minor pieces are very well developed. They successfully castled. And now white can start thinking about what they want to do in the middle game from here. Possibly playing knight to e5 at some point. Possibly trying to expand with e4, maybe after rook to e1. And white certainly has a fine position here. The London system has gotten very popular lately, really at all levels of chess. And it's easy to see why. It's an easy opening to learn. It really cuts down on the amount of memorization you have to do with white. Because for the most part, you don't care what your opponent does. You can play your same setup against almost anything black chooses, and you're almost guaranteed to get a reasonable position out of the opening. Now, personally, I don't recommend learning the London system to developing chess players for a couple reasons. One, I consider it somewhat unambitious here. You're always going to get a reasonable position out of the opening, but with the white pieces, it's good to get in the habit of trying to put pressure on the player with black. And this kind of gives the player with black a free hand. You're going to get a reasonable position, but it's unlikely you're going to get a big advantage, and black is probably going to be fine too out of the opening. But secondly, and probably more importantly, if you play the London system, you're going to see the same kind of middle games over and over and over again. I think it's important for developing chess players to get experience in a wide variety of different positions and pawn structures. Uh, for example, you can imagine an E4 player having to learn how to play against the Sicilian defense, the Karo Khan, the French, the Scandinavian, E5, the Alakine defense, there's so many different possible positions to reach from that. Or if you play D4 and C4 going for main lines of the Queen's Pawn opening, like the Queen's Gambit, or the white side of Benoni's, or the King's Indian defense, Nemzo Indian defense, you're going to see a lot more different kinds of positions than if you begin every game with D4, Knight F3, Bishop F4, E3, C3, Bishop D3, Knight D2, and castles. Now that said, it is certainly easy to see the appeal of this, especially if you don't like memorizing openings. And at any rate, if you play uh, if you play against the Queen's Pawn opening with black, you're going to need to know how to deal with the London system. So let's start taking a look at some of the lines. We can start in this position we were looking at earlier. I just wanted to give you a feel for how the game might progress. So I pulled a game here that was played in the Czech Republic in the late 90s between two masters to show both sides' ideas here. In this game, white tries to get a kingside attack, black tries to get counterplay on the queen side, and the game ended in a draw. Black played here b6, trying to develop this light squared bishop, h3, bishop b7, queen e2, rook c8, and now knight e5. We mentioned this was a common idea in the London system to throw that knight into e5, possibly with the idea to follow up later with f4 and beginning a kingside attack. Knight takes e5, bishop takes e5, bishop b6, and f4. Black played g6 now, trying to slow white down a little bit, shutting down this bishop's diagonal and stopping f5 for the time being. White continued on with a very committal g4, kind of exposing their own king a bit, but white definitely is playing for an attack on the king side. Rook e8, queen to f3, queen e7, rook f2. White begins preparation to either swing this rook out to the h-file or g-file to help out that way, or maybe even to double on the f-file here. Knight d7, putting the question now to this bishop, which white now exchanges. h4, rook e7, h5. White objectively is doing quite well in this position. White is getting a big attack here on the king side, and black's a bit slow with their queen side counterplay. In the game, black decided to close up the queen side here and play c4, and proceed with a pawn storm with b5 and a5, and it worked out to give them some counterplay. Bishop c2, b5, a3, a5, 
White goes ahead and exchanges now on g6 and plays queen h3. Black starts trying to open lines over here on the queen side with b4. A takes b4, a takes b4, knight to f3, bringing more pieces into this attack. Rook to g7, g5, and rook to a8, contesting this open a file. Now, we're far out of the opening now, so I'll stop the analysis of this game here. White is clearly better in this position, but the game ended up in a draw. Black is holding on for now on the king side, and it's easy to imagine their space advantage here on the queen side being very useful in some endgames. For example, by playing b3, fixing this weakness here on b2, possibly bringing a knight to a4 to bear down against this weakness, and black could be better in a lot of endgames because of that. But of course, the main purpose here was to illustrate the effectiveness of white's knight e5 idea, simply throwing that knight further into the action, and following up with f4 and trying to get a kingside attack. Let's consider another way black can play against the London system. This is how I actually usually play when someone plays the London against me, and I have the black pieces. Black can play c5 here, we've looked at that. Let's say e3, knight c6, c3, and now black can play an early queen b6 here and force white to do something else besides just blindly develop here with bishop d3 or knight b to d2 or something because the b-pawn is hanging. I think this is one of black's more active attempts to take on the London system. White has a couple options here. One is to play queen to b3, defending the b2 pawn and offering an exchange of queens, and white's not really too concerned about black exchanging queens here. After queen takes b3, a takes b3, white does end up with doubled pawns, but they also now have a semi-open file for this rook, and this pawn was brought closer to the center. This position is actually considered quite pleasant for white, so black usually won't do that after queen b3. In fact, black's most popular move is to play c4 and try to get white to take the queen on b6. If white plays queen takes b6, a takes b6, it looks like black has double pawns here too, but black is going to be able to get rid of them. Black can play b5 and b4, and white actually can't stop black from doing this. For example, if uh, white plays knight to d2, b5, a3, it looks like they're about to stop this pawn from advancing forever, and black's going to be left with a weakness, but black's just in time to play b4, making use of the pin here on the a file before white can move that rook, and black succeeds in getting rid of the doubled pawn. So black clearly has a space advantage here on the queen side. White's usually going to be trying to play e4 and expand in the center after white finishes up their development. Alternatively, after c4, white can simply move the queen away. White could think that this queen here did its job. It forced black to remove the pressure here on the center, forced this pawn to advance forward, and the queen can just take a step back, and white can later try to play e4 in the middle game. Now black actually has a nice little move here. Black can play bishop f5 and develop this bishop with tempo, and the white queen actually cannot take this bishop because now after queen takes b2, this rook would be trapped in the corner. So after bishop f5, simply queen c1, and it looks kind of passive from white for the time being, but again, black removed the pressure here from the white center, black walked up the queen side, and white's going to try to play e4 and strike back in the middle game. Alternatively, after queen b6, White doesn't have to play queen b3, white can play queen c1 directly, just not giving black this tempo of playing c4. Here the pawn tension remains in the center, but white's plans are largely going to remain the same. White's just going to want to finish up their development, play bishop d3 and knight d2, get castled, and go from there in a middle game. By the way, I should point out that queen c2 is probably not the best move here, because again, you're going to get hit with bishop f5 at some point. Let's say a c takes d4, e takes d4, bishop f5. And once again, you can't take that bishop because of queen takes b2, and you would have to come to c1 anyways. So far, we've been looking at playing the London system against the symmetrical queen's pawn opening. White can even play the London against knight f6, though. It's going to be a little bit different, but it's certainly still playable. For example, white could still play knight f3, bishop f4. The main difference is going to be that black retains some additional flexibility here. We don't have this really rigid center with d4 and d5. At some point, black might even try to play d6 and e5, trying to really blunt this bishop and to kick it away with tempo. So the London system isn't as popular against the knight f6 defense as it is against d5, but it's certainly still a viable option for white. And I just pulled together one sample line here to show how the game might continue. b6, e3, bishop e7, knight b to d2. White's continuing with their favorite setup here. They're just delaying c3 for now, though, because there's no real reason to play it without any pressure here on the center. I guess white's retaining the option to maybe play c4 in one tempo if they ever want to. Bishop e7, h3, just making sure that this bishop has somewhere to hide in case black attacks it with knight d5 or knight h5. 
uh, castle, bishop d3, c5, now white goes ahead and plays c3, knight to c6, castles, d6, again black's not committing that pawn to d5, black's keeping their options open, possibly to play e5 later on if they want to, queen e2, rook e8, and rook f to d1, and we see that white got their ideal set up here, both bishops developed actively, the knights are both fine, white was able to finish up their development, but then again so was black, black has really nothing concrete to fear here, and we're just going to play a middle game from here. Finally, before we wrap up, I wanted to point out one more interesting variation, and that is the knight c3 London system. That might look something like this. Let's say d4, d5, bishop f4, knight f6, and now knight to c3. Now at first this looks a little strange, blocking in the c pawn in a queen's pawn opening. You don't see that too often because it's so easy for this pawn to help out on either c4 or c3. But white has some ideas here. This knight might support an early e4 in some lines, although it's not too likely with this knight watching over that square. But there's some lines where black has to watch out for knight b5. I almost fell for this in a tournament game once. For example, if black plays c5 here, very normal move. White can play e3. And now if black plays the seemingly normal move knight to c6, almost an automatic move if you're not really paying close attention, black's actually just about lost after knight to b5. It's simply almost impossible to stop knight c7. You can try playing e5, but after d takes e5, you don't even have some in-between move like knight h5. You're just going to be down a pawn and in a very bad position here with black. Because of this, going back here after uh, e3 here, the main line has become for black to simply exchange here on d4 and to play a6. It looks a bit strange to waste a tempo like this in the opening, just playing a move like a6 instead of developing a piece. But you have to remember that white's knight here is a little misplaced from kind of a classical principles perspective. It's not really able to access any of the squares here that it might want to access. This knight's very restricted and blocking in the c pawn. So if white made a concession in the opening playing knight c3, it's certainly fine for black to waste a move here playing a6. Just making sure there's no problem here on the b5 square and then continuing on with their development from there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something about the London system today please make sure you visit chesspathways.com and get signed up. It's totally free, only takes five seconds, and I will send you a free move-by-move -move guide to chess thinking when you do. So let me help you become the best chess player you can be and join our community at chesspathways.com. Thanks, and I'll see you there.